Hi, my name is Barb Groff. I work for Ecolocity. We are a work management solution service company, and we are a Monday.com partner. What I'd love to talk to you about today is dashboards in Monday. So there are several different flavors of dashboards that you can make in Monday. Um, by flavor, I mean at the project level, the program level, or the portfolio level. Portfolio level. So the project level, is you're just reporting on one project. If you go up a level and you want to report on multiple boards, then that would be at a program level. And currently the pro plan, the limit is 20 boards that you can report on. And then portfolio would be more of a leadership board. So it's top level information that you're showing. So a dashboard in Monday is really just a visualization of the data that you have in the boards. And it's a great way to report out for your team, for your business. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here and I'll show you two different ways to make a board. So you can either make it at the workspace level, you come in here and say that you want a new dashboard. We're actually going to do it in my folder, which is called Project Portfolio Management. We're going to come in here and we're going to create a new. There we go. And then we're going to name that dashboard. Okay, um, you can name it Project Today Dashboard. Now, there's two things you can do here. You can either make it private, and that would be like no one can see it but you. Sometimes I do that as I'm building a dashboard, and then you would share it over here. Main would be that you would share it to everyone that has access to that Monday.com. Then you just hit Create and you'll come up with a new dashboard. So now you'll see over here, we have Project Today Dashboard. In my folder, I have Project A, I have Project B. This is the dashboard we're gonna talk about. And then I have a, a board up here. So in a new dashboard, how we're gonna start this is that we add widgets. And Monday has many, many, many different widgets that you can add into a dashboard, staying at the top. So what they, Monday means by this is you really at the top of a dashboard, it's, it's a good practice to have the high level data so that it can be seen quickly. And then as you move down into the dashboard, you're delving down into the data more specifically. So the top is overall and then the, the bottom is really specific reporting. Um, they have many different widgets. There's a battery, which is kind of just the status overall. They have numbers, tables. The ones I use the most are chart, timeline, overview, workload. There also, you can come down here and there are many different apps that you can integrate into a Monday board. Monday has some of their own and then there are third party that you can purchase. So it's good to know that when you're working to build a dashboard. So let's go back here. Um, so let's say that we want to add in, a, I'll do another number one. So when it's adding a number, you don't know what this data is. If you click here, this is going to tell you that what you're adding. Like you could change this to dollars. You could change it to average instead of, so these are just how you just specify that number. But what you want to do is come up here and go into settings. Now settings is really where you're going to distinguish what you're actually reporting on. So right now it's reporting on columns. We could change it to count and it's counting at our task level, not the subtask level, at the task level. You could change that and you could do subtask level and you would report out on that. The advanced settings is really what I just showed you where you're picking up how you want it to report and then the board. So right now we're currently only doing one board and this is at the project level, so it's an individual project. You can also select down here what groups in your board that you want or don't want. So you could have one number widget that is just for the approved. How many of projects are approved? And it will change that data. So that is how we specify what data we want to have in our numbers widget. You can come up here, whoops, let's just cancel out. You can come up here and you can either change this right here. So we would change what we're reporting out on. You can change the name. The other thing that's important to pull out is the filter. 
So you can filter the data in this to be whatever you do want or don't want showing. So maybe what we want to do is we want to say that the status, I forget what we did with the step column or not, um, is, and I usually change the status, is not color is white. Oops. So we're saying here that the status color is, I'm going to say is not, done. So we don't want to report out on all the ones that are done. We want to report out on all those that are open. And then we would save this and it would change that data. So those filters are really great and handy to just specify and drill down into your data. Another thing to point out is that you can change the size of these just by moving this cursor around. It'll then click in and you have an it size the same. One of the things that drives me crazy is that I don't like that this box is bigger than this box. So what I do when I'm making another one is I just hit duplicate. It makes the same box. It's the same size. And then I can just change the settings and change the filter to what I want. That's just one of my pet peeves. You can move these around by just kind of dragging and moving and that Monday will put it in the next open slot. Like if I wanted to move this one up, I could and it will move something else down. So it's a great way to reorganize when you're getting down to the final part of your dashboard. Let's go look at a couple different ones. Let's go in and make a chart. Okay. So currently what I have in here is I have a chart for group status, and then I have what's overdue subtask. So maybe what we wanna do here is we wanna come in here and we wanna report out on something different. So we're gonna click into settings, the XF, we're gonna change that. So what we're gonna say right now, it's reporting out at the task level, the request status. So I wanna change this and I wanna make it at the subtask level who the owner is. And then our y-axis, so our vertical, and well, we don't want that. We want to count, and we want to count. Click here. Okay, so now you see that data change, right? There's more settings. I don't need to change any of those at this time, but you could. You could show only top and bottom items. You could show cumulative. This is good when you're doing pie charts. I mean, area charts, excuse me. You could add a bench line. It's not really relevant when we're doing assigned to. You could change how many boards here, or you could change it up top on that, and we can change the groups. All right, so now I have my data showing. Um, the other thing you can do is you can change the way that you want it. This one I'm doing as just a bar chart. You could do it in a pie. You can do it in lines. There's many, many different flavors that they have. This would be if you had, were having two boards, you would want to have use these bars that are cumulative of the boards. So we're going to keep it here. And then we're going to close it out because we have it the way we want it. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to say sub tasks I assigned to. So now I know, looking at this, how many tasks I have and how many tasks Lisa has. Now, another thing, we talked about filters. So right now it's reporting out every single thing that I'm assigned to and what Lisa's assigned to. So we want to come up to our filter and we want to make a filter that says if owner, what we want is status. If the status is done, we change this to is not done. So now what it's going to report out on is all those items that Lisa has that are open. So you, do we care honestly at this point what she has done? For this report, no. It might be a different report where you said how much she had completed, but this is subtask by assigned to. Maybe up here we change this to open subtask by assigned to. So we now know that Lisa has three open subtasks, and that's our chart.
Another great widget that I like in Monday, I'm going to show you that one. And it's great when, especially when you're reporting out at the program level, it's called workload. And it'll bring up a calendar view where it's showing how many things are assigned to me in each week. I love this view. Very, very um, great visualization. The other one that I think is good, let's see, let's show you a couple more. Um, this one's table. So what a table is, and I call this just kind of a report down. So in a table, what you're reporting on is that entire drill down of the board of the, so you can see the data and not have to go back to the board itself. So you're seeing it all in the dashboard. Um, what's the other one? I, oh, this is a new one. That's really kind of cool. Um, more widgets. You can come here and I'll show you how to search because sometimes you can't find it right away. This one came out. I don't know, within the last year anyway. And what it's going to bring up is it's going to bring up a goal. So let's say we were tracking budget in this and we're not in this board, but let's say we were. We can come over here and we can go to settings and we could change this to 10,000. We could change it to some. We can go down here and say it's not dollars, it's percent. Um, so it's a great little above, and this one I would move up to the top of that board so that you're seeing that big data, not the drill down data. And the really best practice in building a dashboard is really dependent on what your project needs to see for data and what the team needs to see. So that's really what you should base what you're going to build into your dashboard with. There's other something else I should show you over here. You can share your board. So right now the dashboard members, or I can invite people by an email or a link. So if I click on dashboard members, right now I'm the only one who can see it. So I'm gonna add Lisa. And now Lisa has access to this board too. This right here shows that I'm the owner and Lisa can look at the board. She can't at this point manipulate it unless I change her permissions. So now I've shared it out. I think that's about, there's another one. You can add a Gantt chart, so you could add your dates. Great one. And you really just want to keep playing with it. You can't break it. You know, you want to resize them. You want to move it up. Oh, come on. Drag widget, there we go. This one I said I want it up at the top, so you can move it up here. And then I would resize it. So those are really the basics to get you started in building your dashboards. Oh, I'll come over here and show you this one. So this is, I have two dashboards. So right here you see that I have not that one project dashboard, I have two. So I'm pulling in data from two boards and combining it. Now the, the important thing to remember with, with this, and I've said this again in other videos, is you have to make sure that I'm pulling in projects A and B, right? So I go to board A, you need to make sure that you have the same column names in A as you do in B so that they can report up into that one dashboard. If the column names are different, the data is going to look all kind of squirrely. So be sure when you're doing that that you have like columns to be able to sign. So when you look at this one, now we see Lisa has 12 things assigned to her, then you will see that it's because she's pulling from 12, not, excuse me, she's pulling from two boards and showing her overall work, not just at that project level. Another thing I do when I'm building these boards is, let's go to this one. I'll show you, we should make, rename this to project. Class dashboard. As I'm building these, I kind of go back and I QC myself. And what I mean by that is right now, this is saying that there are three approved projects. So if we go back, 
to here, and I go down to the group that is approved, I know that there's three. So as I'm building a dashboard, I go back and make sure that I have the right settings set up and kind of just QC myself to make sure that the data is representing what I want it to and what um, it really is. So it's a great tidbit to go back and just check on yours. So that's basically how you start a dashboard and how you build one out as specific as you want to get is what widgets and charts you would want to include. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'd love to help you. Um, again, we are Echolocity and we are Monday.com partner. So have a great day. Thank you.